YouTube. Y'all back tuned in to Make It Make Sense podcast. And this time, man, we got something special going on. Today, we about to break down the 13 ghosts of Empire Distribution. Uh, before I get started, hit that like button and uh, hit that notification bell and please subscribe to the channel. Now, Empire Distribution, a distribution company founded in 2010, led by CEO Gonzi Shaman. Now, Gonz is a very peculiar fellow. No background can be found on him. No family, no uh, high school pictures, no nothing. No old girlfriends. Nobody who can really come forward and vouch for where he came from and how did he end up where he's at right now. But Gonzi uh, allegedly they say uh, is is like 30 late 30s or whatever they say but other records show that he graduated college in 95 now let that sink in college so if he graduated college he had to be in his 20s in 95 so I'm, I'm assuming he, he's around 50 years old or or whatever but uh, Empire it was founded in 2010 whatever and uh you know, he came out the gate doing numbers. He had artists such as Kendrick Lamar and uh, Busta Rhymes. Yeah, and a few more artists to have their music distributed through Empire. But in 2013, I believe that is when all of the sacrificing allegedly and the soul trapping allegedly started to take place. And it's no coincidence that it started in 2013 and they allegedly, what well, he allegedly is using 13 goes for power and a lot of more things. But the first artist I have on the list right here to lose his life in 2013 to start it off was Dobie. People don't look deep into what happened to Dobie. Dobie was allegedly in a, in a nightclub uh, doing his thing. I think, what, December 28, 2013. He's just chilling and, but not only was he the first to get shot, Empire also has used souls, allegedly, that died before the company was even created. Souls like Aaliyah and Mac Drake, they are also signed to Empire Distribution. All this is uh coming from me doing my little research and thinking maybe it is more than what people are saying. People are saying that he's sacrificing people for their contracts. Doesn't make, he can make a whole lot of money off anybody if they was alive. It ain't about the money. It's about the power and the energy, you know what I'm saying? Everybody who dies have a certain attribute he can use and it helps him uh, build the machine to run the music. And if you take a deep look at what's going on, he has been like the only CEO or whatever of a distribution company who does no interviews, he don't talk to nobody, he don't do nothing. When an artist dies, he don't make a statement, he don't come on BET, MTV, he don't say shit. Uh, I believe there are wick Wiccans are is a certain list that uh, is from the Occult, or however you pronounce it, but it's on the screen. O u c c u l t, occult, and uh, they like to follow black magic. Allegedly, black magic is what I believe Gonzi is using to, you know, do what he's doing out here. You gotta think about it deep. In every video that comes on, it's black magic in the video, not black magic that the editor of the video put in there. It is appearing on its own. I know it sounds crazy, but it, that's what's going on. Everybody has corpse and you know skeletons and dead uh, animals and etc. That that will appear on the screen if you just watch closely. That is where your third eye will have to come in. But from people like King Von, Mo3, Young Dolph, each one of those murder scenes, crime scenes, whatever you want to call it, totally fake. Doesn't look real. A heart. A horrible job at editing, first of all. Uh, I will be breaking down each of the 13 ghosts in the 13 part series. This is the first part of the series. So I guess a 14 part series, because this is the introduction. This is letting you know what I believe what's going on. 
black magic is what I believe was going on within the empire distribution. Uh, each uh, artist only had one rule to follow by my research of the Wiccans. Uh, and first of all, a Wiccan is a warlock or a witch. A female Wiccan is a witch. A male is a warlock. These are warlocks and witches that we're dealing with. But they only had one rule to follow and the only rule was the rule of three. The rule of three. Harm no one, do as you wish. Harm no one, do as you wish. Okay, really, the most powerful ones, the most influential ones on the list we see right here, the Mo 3s, the King Vons, the Dolphs, the Slim 400s, the Draco, the Rulers, uh, they are certified, AK, you know, street niggas to the end. Before they even signed a deal, the life that they were living, they really didn't change it. They just added music to it. So, allegedly, they were doing crimes, hurting people, and uh, defending a territory or whatever set they represented, you know, into the end of their death. I mean, the end of their life. But each person on the list represents a certain power and a certain attribute that is needed to help the machine run, to keep everything to keep everything that Gonzi allegedly he thinks he's put together stay afloat. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Lotto Cash, Mac Dre, everybody on the screen that you see pop up. You know, I'm just letting you get a feel of what's going on because this is the introduction. The first one, we're going to do the first episode, part two. You know, if you ever seen the movie 13 Ghosts, uh, you know what I'm talking about. But if you haven't, go back and look at the movie 13 Ghosts. 13 Ghosts, 13 Ghosts was a movie, a uh, supernatural horror film. There was like, uh, it was a billionaire scientist that was trapping souls inside of a big house with glass walls. No real walls. Each glass wall had spells on it. And different spells made him do different things. He had 13 ghosts. And each ghost had a different backstory to them. Not just any 13 souls he captured. It was a certain kind of, of soul he needed to get the outcome that he wanted. Just like Gonzi, allegedly, I believe, had to get a certain kind of soul to produce a certain kind of outcome because of course he had bigger artists he could have had you know maybe sign and did whatever he needed to do uh you know sacrifice allegedly their soul for fame but each of the top five of those guys on this list each was that star ring that that that, that uh pentagram ring, pinnacle, however you want to say it, the star ring with the circle, that's a magical tool that they're, you know, taught to use to attract fans and attract people and gain likeness. And they say, if it's used wrong, that's violating the rule of three. And if you rule, and if you violate the rule of three, you will suffer karma. And your karma will come back three times worse than what you put it out. So, if they go around allegedly taking people live, slide, glide, uh, shooting and ducking, or whatever the hell they be doing, it's going to come back three times worse. So, that's why each of the top artists that lost their life, their death was kind of gruesome. It wasn't just a, he got shot, he did. No, they was shot, laid out, everybody looking. You know, it's a whole lot of different situations to let you know that it was staged. Why wasn't more? Why wasn't it more than just one or two or three people videos uploaded on YouTube? Like, yeah, I met the scene of so and so death. Just think of Young Dolph or whoever died. PMB Rock. It's going to be thousands of people going live on each of their social media platforms, telling people that they are at the scene of where it happens. And it's not like that, y'all. Do your research. Go look, but. By the end of the last breakdown or the last ghost, you will understand exactly where I'm coming from. But until then, hit that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell, man. Part two coming.